Good evening, I'm Genevieve Salemi, and tonight I'd like to talk to you about why it is that Prokofiev's Solo Sonata, Opus 115, is so intriguing to me. Uh, I have recently fallen in love with this piece uh, for many reasons, but the main word that comes to my mind is quirkiness. So what is it about his music, and this piece in particular, in the first movement, that is um, so quirky. Why do I feel so many opposing things all at once? You know, uh, gravity and lightheartedness, and uh, a sense of um, something serious and joking at the same time. Well, um, first, uh, the thing that gets me the most in this piece is really. Um, how much of a march it is, why it is that I feel like bopping my head and tapping my foot to it every time I hear it and play it. Uh, the reason for this feeling is actually because of the way he composed it. His rhythms are very square. So when you look at his music and just sort of glance at the entire score, the rhythm throughout is overwhelmingly on beats. So what I mean is that there's very little syncopation, like when you're thinking jazziness, right? So that was um, uh, Van Morrison's Moon Dance, right? Um, when you listen to that, the melody doesn't quite match the beat, right? That's syncopation. When you hear Prokofiev's piece of music, it is not syncopated at all. Just from the very beginning, the accents that you hear are on beats one, two, three, or one and three, Primarily one and three, but occasionally one, two, and three makes it feel like you're walking. Um, every single beat is apparent throughout the entire thing. So I'll just begin by playing a little bit for you. I'm sort of bringing out this sense of rhythm right now so you can really feel the beat, but it is um, clear throughout. Uh, also, when he gets to the 16th note sections, where he puts the accents, it's on beats one, three, one, two, three. It makes it feel like a cha-cha, like one, two, cha-cha-cha, three, four, cha-cha-cha, right? So... Here's that section. Right? So one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, one, two, three. So really kind of neat. I feel that that is specifically about this piece, uh, what it is in this movement that really makes it feel very square, very on beat, very March-like. There's also another section that he, he actually takes this idea and he uses it several times. And this is the most March-like section in the entire piece um, whenever he does this. Um, it's a combination of chords and single notes um, that make up a March and it's all eighth notes and it goes like this It sounded bump, 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 very square, very on the beat, very marching. Um, the next thing that really brings out um, 
the quirkiness of this piece is uh, the acoustic impact. So um, this piece was actually not initially intended for solo violin. It was intended for unison violin. What I mean by that is um, I have this lovely photo here. <laughs> when I say lovely, I mean, um, I created a photo of me, lots of me. So this image that I created, imagine all of those violins all playing at once. This piece was written for unison violins and no composer ever really did that before. Um, and I don't really know very many composers that have ever done this before or since really. Um, and what happens is all of the violins that are participating in this performance perform the ex same exact piece of music, the same exact score, everything, all in unison, all together. And what you get is this wave of sound that just washes over you. Um, every accent is that much more powerful. Every crescendo is like a massive wave cresting every diminuendo is like that wave receding and every time you get an accent or any kind of um, sudden shift it's almost as though a wave is smacking you upside the head without you really knowing it's even coming it's this massive abrupt jarring moment and that happens throughout the entire piece Another thing I'd like to talk to you about is the changes in major and minor. So when you look at this image that I've created, this is a reduction of the score. Um, in the 16th note passages, one of the ways that Prokofiev gives this sense of unease and this sort of back and forth feeling of emotions is by taking these major and minor and augmented harmonies and rotating them back and forth and just sort of going back and forth. And the feeling you get is this feeling of being on either a teeter-totter or on a balance board. And you're sort of rolling back and forth looking for your center of balance or your key center in this case. So the first section is at the end of the 16th note passages that I had brought out for our cha-cha rhythm. Um, it is at the end of that, and it's in the transition going into the next slow dolce section. hear this it's this really wonderful back and forth feeling that you get in these harmonies this minor major minor major and then all of a sudden the scale leading to where we don't know um, on the A. The next place that this sort of back and forth happens is in a, a similar section um, of 16th notes. It goes back and forth between major and minor again. Well, first minor, then major. And then into a chromatic section which we'll talk about in just a moment. But this feeling of back and forth between minor, major, minor, major is so prominent. Where are we going? It's like an unanswered question. And the last time that this happens, that's as prominent as those times, is where it goes back and forth between augmented and major. And that's a really neat, quirky moment, like um, giving you a sense of, well, this is even more uneasy. Where are we going? 
what is augmented harmony? What does this mean? And that sounds like this. Right? It sort of settles, it sort of resolves, but it sort of doesn't. And we don't quite know where it's going. And then we land. And the, the last thing I want to talk to you about is this. I made one more drawing for this. And it's this. It's chromatic movement through this whole entire piece. Now this I think is probably the quirkiest aspect of this. The chromatic movement, uh, what I mean by this is half steps. And as you can see in this image, every half step in the melody, I've marked with a V between the half steps. So if you look, um, it's all over the place, even just from the very beginning. <laughs> It's got this A, A sharp, B. And that is our very first half step um, combination, our very first chromatic movement. Um, that sets up the whole piece. The next section is our cha-cha section. And funny enough, he accents every time that happens. The D, the C, the C natural, he does it again. And then the G, F sharp, F natural. All of these chromatic motions are accented. And then after that section, that nice little transitional moment that gets into the dolce, he uses all of these moments, all of these chromatic movements really lead us into a new section. So we end that 16th note with that scale up. And that is right, if I mark it for you, that is specifically right here. Now, moving forward, he does this in another big transitional section. That's our second really big transitional moment. That takes us into the second half of the piece. And if you see, it's this chromatic scale that goes on an F natural. And the final big chromatic scale, and this is the biggest of all of them, it's a chromatic scale that goes down, and that's here. It's the entire ending section of the piece. The reason I've shown a keyboard below is so you can see chromatic means all of these notes are moving and they're literally half steps away from each other right, on a piano. So this last section is the final section that takes us into the very end of the piece. And it sounds like this. I'll first play the reduction and then I'll play the, record, the actual um, sheet music. So. actually sounds within the piece. I broke it down to bare bones. The piece goes
that's the actual score. And what happens from that moment is we get this we land on the D, which is our final key. So we've gone so back and forth with keys all over the place, and we're finally at D. The end of our piece. I hope you enjoy Prokofiev when listening to the full performance of this movement as much as I do. Thank you.